Hello there, my friends, and welcome to the Atheist Experiment. I'm going to do something a little different today. Um, I'm going to do a reaction video. Um, not like a reaction video to sports or something funny or interesting happening. I'm going to do a reaction video to a video that someone sent to me saying that they can prove that God exists and that atheism is debunked. So, I mean, I have problems with that right off the bat, but uh, let's start the video and let's get into it. So I've got my laptop set up here and uh, I'll just give you a quick little introduction of uh, what I'm watching. So this gentleman's name is Dale Garland and he sent me this video and uh, he thinks he can disprove atheism and he can prove that God exists. So let's start the video and see what he has to say. Hi there people. The title of this message is Disproving Atheism by pro pro Proving My True God, the Lord Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit is Real. Amen. Okay, let's get started. So I have issues with that right off the bat, of course. Um, you can't disprove atheism. Atheism isn't a thing. It's not something you can disprove. It's like saying, uh, disprove that I'm not a stamp collector or disprove that there isn't a teapot floating in space orbiting uh, the sun. Um, you just, it, atheism is the lack of a belief in gods and uh, it, it's not a belief in anything. It's a lack of evidence to show that uh, that God exists at all. So that's that's what atheism is. It's not something you can disprove. Let's continue. So, when I encounter an unbeliever who is an atheist, who claims to be an atheist, I will ask them a question and the question is, is I say to the unbeliever, what proof and evidence do you have for atheism being accurate and correct? And so... Okay, I got to stop it here again. Again, you can't prove that you don't believe in something. Um, it's up to the believer, the person making the claim, to prove their claim. It's not up to the person who doesn't believe it to prove it's not real. So let's let's continue. Some unbelievers will say atheism is is not a claim and some unbelievers will say that uh, unless you can prove God exists then atheism is accurate and correct. But well, they don't actually that answer that question directly. And so um, basically uh, some of them actually, when they say that atheism is not a claim, they're disproving atheism. Why? Because when atheism does not make a claim, then it cannot make a claim to be accurate and correct. This is true. We're not making a claim. And because we're not making a claim, there's nothing to be accurate or correct about it. There's no claim. So I think he's got his ideas mixed up here. And so some of them don't answer the question while some actually uh, answer the question by disproving atheism. And so some of them want proof and evidence from me that my God is real. And so... Yes, that's how it works. You have the claim. 
the proof has to come from you. Wait a second. I just noticed there's a car alarm going off in the background here. Give me a minute. Basically, what I say to them who require proof and evidence for my God to be real is I say my pure religion is 100% uh, real. Why? Because my almighty Saviour God, the Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, had it said, preach it about many things that are real. My true God, the Father Christ Jesus, talk it about wars come to pass and earthquakes in divers places in Matthew 24 verse 6 to verse 7. That says, and ye shall hear of wars and rumours of wars. Say that ye be not troubled. Okay, so first of all, we're quoting from the Bible, which we as atheists, most of us already know, you can't use the Bible as evidence to prove the Bible. So the God, uh, the the God of Christianity, comes from the stories of the Bible, and so it's the Bible proving the Bible. You can't use the Bible to prove the Bible. So just because you have a passage in a book, that's not proof. And and then to go and say that I've heard this argument a thousand times before. It's, they think it's some kind of prophecy because um, they've said that there's rumors of war and war and earthquakes. And it's like, yeah, earthquakes happen. War happens. Rumors of war happens. It's still happening. It's always happened. It's uh, just because the Bible said something obvious. It's like, uh, it's like, thanks, Captain Obvious. Yeah, we knew that. Okay, the Bible's not prophecy. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes oh God, in diverse places. The it takes a real person to speak about real things. Amen. Okay, so he said at the beginning that when an atheist asks him a question to prove God exists, this is what he tells him. I'm calling BS because this is not what he tells them. He is reading from the Bible right now. He doesn't have this shit memorized. This is not what he responds to when an atheist talks to him. I mean, it's, unless he's carrying his Bible around and has that passage ready to go everywhere he goes, like, I'm sorry, he's full of shit when he says this is the way he responds to people. So it's real, wars have been happening, earthquakes have been happening, and so, yeah. yes, um, the disciple Matthew was writing about what my Saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ, has said. So I don't doubt that. It, it takes a real person to speak about real things. And so... Allegedly. I mean, so basically... Um, Why wouldn't you doubt that? Somebody wrote something in a book about another person uh, in court. That's called hearsay. You, you can't uh, speak evidence based on what somebody else said or did. Um, yeah, I don't get it. Real things do happen. And so, so one former atheist implied to me years ago, he said, Dow, what you do is you line up something that's real to what the Bible says that is real. And yes, and that's what the Holy Spirit gets me to actually do. Um, and so it's... Yeah. The Bible is full of real things. It's full of real places. 
uh, names of places, uh, names of mountains. Um, it lines up with a lot of real things. There's a few things that line up with history. Not a lot, but there's a few things. Um, yeah, so it has some real stories about real things and real places. But we also know that New York is a real city, but we also know that Spider-Man doesn't exist as a real superhero. It's, uh, it's a story and it's surrounded by real things. It's amazing to be able to read it through the whole Bible, the King James Bible, and see how the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth talks about real things. So moving on, I say to the unbeliever who claims to be an atheist, if you truly believe in true science, then you will believe that the King James Holy, Holy Righteous Bible talks about understanding science within Daniel 1 verse 4. Children in whom was no blemish, but well favoured and skilful in all wisdom and cunning in knowledge and understanding science, and such as had ability in them to stand in the king's palace, and whom they might teach the learning and the tongue of the Chaldeans. Therefore, my true almighty righteous saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ, is 100% real. Amen. <coughs> so I did science at school. I understand it's science. It's in the King James Bible. So I would say to an unbeliever, you know to believe that understanding science Okay, so again, this is something he's reading. Uh, it's not the way he responds to people when they ask him a question. But if he's reading a passage from the Bible and he's inserted the word science in there, I'm sorry, but science wasn't a word back then. So it, science, I'm, unless there's an updated version of the Bible I'm not aware of, there, the word science doesn't exist in the Bible. It's not part of a passage. So I think he's kind of fibbing a little bit here. It's found written in Daniel 1 verse 4. So that's another real thing. Science that is my not God, in the King Jehovah James Bible. Christ Jesus talks about. Science is real. And if an unbeliever don't believe that in the in Daniel 1 verse 4, they deny science. No, it's not. Who cares about Daniel? Who cares about any other book of the Bible? In Genesis, the science is all wrong. It's all written by people who didn't understand how the universe works and how our world works. And they made up shit to try and explain it. The, the science in Genesis about the uh, creation of the world and the creation of the universe it's all out of order. It's it's wrong. You can't. Have the, it says that there was light first, and then he built the sun. It's like, well, the sun is the thing that gives the light. So, um, so yeah, there, there's no science. If you're going to claim one passage might have a, a like a tiny bit of accuracy to it, um, that doesn't make the Bible a science book, and it doesn't mean that it believes in science. This is typical cognitive dissonance. There are plenty of scientists and scientifically minded people who still believe in God and believe in the Bible. Cognitive dissonance is when you have two opposing beliefs in your mind and you don't try to reconcile those opposing beliefs and figure out which one is right and which one is wrong. You, it's, uh, it's one of the laws of logic the law of contradiction, you can't have two beliefs that oppose each other and believe they're both correct. One is correct and one is not correct. So if you believe in science and you believe in your religion, then that's cognitive dissonance. You're believing in two things that oppose each other. And so moving on. I say to an unbeliever who, who claims to be an atheist, if you... Okay, so he said this over and over again. 
a non-believer who claims to be an atheist as if that's two different things. It's not. If you're a non-believer, you're an atheist. Sorry, whether you like it or not. That's what atheism means. It means you don't believe in God or gods. And that's all it means. So if you don't believe in God or gods, you're an atheist. You're not an unbeliever who is an atheist. You're just an atheist. Truly believe that killing a person is immorally wrong, then you will truly believe that my true almighty Lord, Jehovah God, Christ Jesus is right when my Saviour, the, the Father, Lord Jesus Christ, God the Father says, Exodus 20 verse 13, thou shalt not kill. Amen. Again, we're quoting the Bible to prove the Bible. And you're picking one commandment? I bet he can't even memorize the other nine. So, <clears throat> pardon me. So, so I read that I won't kill someone. See that? And that's the good thing. That's morally good, not killing someone. And so, um, so basically, um, there's punishment for those who kill. And the courts look at the fact that killing is wrong. And and they uh, they it goes back to the. Ten Commandments, God's moral laws, and so, so uh, let's have a look. Moving on, when a judge in America. So, we already knew that killing another person was bad before the Bible came into existence. And we know that killing is bad now and we don't need the Bible to say so because I know that I don't want to be killed so I can go on an assumption that other people don't want to be killed either. That's how we know that we shouldn't kill. Uh, American says, when a judge in an American courtroom says to a murderer, you're going to face death sentence and when the that murderer gets the death sentence then that means that there was death in the power of the tongue of the judge to say okay so big deal killing is uh, is immoral i agree but uh, the bible also says that slavery is good it teaches you how to own a slave it teaches you that you can beat your slave as long as you don't kill them within a few days um, it teaches you that you can rape a woman and then all you have to do is pay her father a few shekels and then she's yours if you want her. And if not, well, she gets stoned to death because it's her fault that she got raped. So there's lots of immoral teachings in the Bible as well. Take death against a murderer in an American courtroom. Therefore, my God, the Father, the Lord at Jesus, Jesus Christ was right when he said in Proverbs, 18 verse 21 death and life are in the power of the tongue and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof amen and so so basically yeah atheism is not real it it, it, ha it has no belief system you're right it doesn't and it cannot prove itself to be accurate and we're correct. not trying to um and so so another thing that is very powerful 
to say to an unbeliever who claims to be an atheist, as this is what the Holy Spirit had me say to many unbelievers who claim to be an atheist. I say, if I pray that you will not die the tomorrow, the Bible again. and if you do not die tomorrow, then you will truly be believing, trusting, and having godly, righteous faith in my true almighty Saviour, God, Jehovah, Christ, Jesus, the Lord, Holy Ghost. Amen. See that? So he just says, see that? As if, as if that's the proof? He read something from the Bible? That's his proof? This is awesome. So, I hope whoever's watching this is, is really happy and joyful. I know I'm happy and joyful. I love reading the word of God and, and you haven't proven proven anything. my God, the Lord at Jesus Christ to be real. Through the power of the Holy Spirit and I give thanks unto my God, the Lord at Jesus Christ of Nazareth for him using me to proclaim his spiritual truths. Amen. I'm done. So this guy has not proven anything. He's read a bunch of stuff from the Bible to prove the Bible. It's like, uh, I mean, I'll use the classic example. If I read the Harry Potter books and then said, this is all real, and then referred to the Harry Potter, book, Potter books to prove it's real, it's not proof. You need some kind of evidence outside of that to make it, to make proof. I'm sorry, Mr. Garland, but uh, you did a piss poor job of proving anything here. And as far as disproving atheism, well, not only is it not something you can disprove, you certainly haven't. You haven't presented anything that matters. You haven't presented anything that's evidence. Um, so keep trying, man. Keep trying. Um, and I think uh, if, you, if you believe in your God so strongly, I'm not sure, uh, I'm not sure where this guy is uh, filming from. Looks like a small room somewhere, but uh, you need to pray to God to uh, get rid of that mold you got growing up on the ceiling behind you. That's uh, that's probably not good for you. You should probably get that checked out. Um, a little prayer will probably fix that though. Thank you. Hey there, my friends. If you enjoy my videos and you would like to see more, click subscribe and don't forget to click on the little bell to get your notifications. You can also follow me on Facebook and Instagram. Just look for The Atheist Experiment and you'll find me. See you next time and stay skeptical.